it's inside that cylinder there's some paddles in there so it grabs everything brings it up to the top and then it drops okay that's how slow it's spinning it gets here drops okay that's how everything works it's tumbling and it's getting mixed with this here grit and it's combing grooming and fluffing up that fur so when i'm doing that i'm doing that before i flesh so here when i open this up you can see we still have all the grease on here and then this here brown stuff that is the grit now the reason why you know i get asked all the time why don't you flesh and then tumble because that grit will help dry your pelt so it'll dry faster so what's going to happen now is if this had a bad rub in the neck say it was snared um, bad tick marks in there if i would flesh this and then tumble it all those spots are going to look twice as bad as what they really are so that's why you leave your grease on that way it can't get to the leather um, but what it's doing is it's taking care of my fur. That's, that's my main number here. Number one, what I want to get done. So here's our beam. We'll get the process started here. Um, just like I said yesterday, everything I do, it's one leg up, one leg down. Uh, it's repetition, whether I'm doing a coyote, fox, mink, it doesn't matter. It, it just, uh, muscle memory, it's just, it's instilled into you whatever you grab it's just the same practice always just a little different from one species to another but before we pick up our flushing knife what I want to do is make sure all that nose cartilage is out let me grab a knife here we'll grab two or three because Leon never has a sharp knife okay so the nose cartilage right here to, to get that to pop out I'm just sticking my finger in there, tip of the nose, and shove it directly at myself. By doing that, it exposes that cartilage. I can come in there, cut about halfway through, can push a little harder, a little more comes out. Do that again. I'm right to the tip of the nose, and then I'll cut that cartilage off. Okay. When it comes to the boarding process, you'll see what this really does. So if I take my finger and push on that nose, see how it curls over and hooks my finger? It does that same thing on your, on your board, on your stretcher. So with that done, we'll go ahead and get started with the fleshing. So here's my flesh and knife. Um, and if anyone's new to it, basically almost all flesh and knives is gonna be sharp on this outside radius and it's dull on the inside radius. Now on a coon, it's tough to get it started, so you're always gonna start with that sharp side. We're gonna work until we can get down where it's easier to work, flip to the dull side, and we'll start pushing, okay? So right now, I wanna work right here. So you can see, I'm trying to tighten it up, because once it's tight, it's gonna lay down, so I can come right in here and go to work. Okay, you're going to hear me say tension a lot. You're going to hear me say keep it tight. Because um, anytime that leather is laying down and it's staying tight, you can see I can work. Okay, anytime you get down here and it wants to bunch and move around, that's when you put holes in it. You don't have tension. Okay, so back to what we're doing here. I'm just using the sharp side. I'm kind of using a shaving action not a push i'm just kind of shaving just like so now i want to work over here on this side of the ear but see how everything is moving what do i have i don't have tension to get tension here i call it turning the corner i'm going to take the nose off over here and i'm going to bring it around and you'll see tension pull like that tighten it up see how i'm able to do that by having that leather tight, I can do what I want and it's not dictating anything to me. I can work with confidence with what I'm doing. So we're still on the sharp side. We're getting really close to the front leg here. Once you get to about right here, it's a feel all process, but once you get to about right there, we're gonna stop using the sharp side 
and go to the dull side. But what I want to do is I want to just work this area. I don't want to be spinning and turning. I just want to work here. So I'm going to knock a trail here, knock a trail here. That way I'll always stay right where I want to work. So <clears throat> I'm on the dull side. I'm pushing down enough to get through the fat but make contact with the leather. I'm not bulldogging. I'm just making enough contact to keep it on the leather and scraping it clean. Okay. Now on the back side here, the back strap is here. It's going to be a little bit tougher, so I got to use a little more effort. If there's that back strap, that's what this little pinkish red meat there is. We got to break through it, and you can see there's fat underneath there. That has to come off. But I'll knock this trail here because this is where I want to work. Once I've got that done, I'll come right back up here, working my way down <clears throat> till I'm parallel with the leg hole, like so. See, here's our leg. We're clean all the way to the leg hole. At that time, instead of being bent over your beam, lock that front leg onto your beam, bring the work to you. Everything's nice and tight. I can come right in here and scrape. Once again, I'm on the dull side. I'm using enough tension to be down onto the board, onto the leather, and pushing away. That's all there is to it. Okay. So I'm just working from here over here to make sure it's clean. Okay. I'm bending over the beam, so I'm going to bring it to me. I'm just going to push off this heavier layer. That way you guys can see a little bit better what's going on. So basically, we're still working here, but I do like to turn right here is the navel here. I like to turn right to the center of the belly and take care of that all at one time. So we'll push this on, like so. Same over here. So I'm always trying to make sure my knife is clean. Every time it's greased up and I keep going over the fur, you just end up putting more and more grease into it. Like I said, I've tumbled my fur, it's clean. I don't want to get it all greased up, dirtied up, so we're gonna keep it clean, okay? Just like so. So once I got the, the belly area here cleaned up good, we'll go back over here to our, our hind leg, because this is that area I'm talking about I want to work. But what you're going to see, as I keep bringing the pelt towards me, I keep turning it, okay? Every time I keep coming up, I'm slowly turning until this leg is going down the beam and the tail's off to the side, okay? By doing it this way, I keep the grease out of the tail and out of my skirt. And it's also easier to break this membrane when you're going that direction. So let me get it set back up here so it's nice and tight. Come right here. Just like so. See how I'm bending over the beam? It's time to bring it to me. And I'm going to start the turn. Okay. I'm working my way right across the small of the back here. Get that off so you can see a little bit. So I want to work over here, so we turn it, just like so. Right here's the tail. I usually catch just a little bit of that tail, just like this. There's the end of the skirt. So once this is clean here, like we have it, now we're going to fully turn it. Legs going down the beam, 
tails over here, just like I said. I'm right in here. Push it off. Just like so. So whether I'm doing a, a hind leg on a coon or a tail, what I found in the in the past here is if I clean this edge off and clean this edge off, it's much easier to pick the center. I don't have any rhyme or reason to why it is that way, but I do know it's what works for me. So you can see I'm just picking this edge off. That's all I'm doing, like so. That edge is clean. That edge is clean. Now I can come right in here and take care of the rest, just like so. Not laying right. Turn it. If you don't have tension, you don't have confidence in what you're doing, it bulges up. You're always in a hurry. You push through. You push in a hole. Okay. Like I say, tension is going to turn into your bestest friend you ever had when you're flushing here. So this is clean, just like that, all the way. Now we're going to do that same practice all over again on the other side. But before I put it down my beam, I want all this grease off. Once again, I've already got my fur clean. I don't need it all greased up, all messed up. So let's get this leg poked up here. I want to make sure that the ear flap isn't laying on my beam. So I stick my finger in here and push it down like so. Hook that nose up here and we're ready to go. So just like before, I want to start here. So I'm pulling nice and tight, just like that. Now we're back on the sharp side to get started. Getting things going, just like so. You can see I can do what I want because it's because it's tight right through here. That's why I'm working there. Working my way down. I want to work over here. See all that? All you're going to do is just shred your belt. Just like before, take that nose, bring it over here, kind of at an angle and down, and you see how it pulls tight right there. Now it lays still. And I can do what I need to. Like I said before, sharp side, you slice. Okay? That's how you get your action. Just like so. Getting closer down to the leg here. Once we get to that point, we're going to switch over to the dull side. Once again, I want to work here. I don't need to blaze a trail. It's already done. I just need to knock a trail on this side. And we'll do that quick. And just like before, we're on the back. I gotta break that saddle. Like so. Come back up. And we'll start taking everything down. Just like before, once you get parallel to the leg hole here, that's far enough. So you can now put the leg hole up on top. Everything tightens up for you. You don't have to work so hard to, to hold your pelt. It'll lock right onto your beam and get it going, just like so. I want to work that. So I just need to turn it, twist it, so to speak like so and get it going so just like before it's always about tension see how it wants to can you guys see that it wants to bunch right there i don't have it set up perfectly in line reposition sure i can get it by keep pounding away but the more and more I work at it, I'm going to raise hair roots and also the potential of putting a hole in it. So just take the time to reposition. 
Okay, right now I'm going to be doing that same thing. The hind legs here, tails here right now. Every time I bring it up, I'm going to keep walking that tail over this way, and that leg's going down. So I'm starting to turn already. So I can break that right there. Don't like how my leather's set up. Reposition. Everything's tight now. Okay. I know it sounds like a broken record. I'm gonna push this off. I know it sounds like I'm a broken record, but that's all it really is. Get yourself in line where you're working. Everything's tight. Everything works. Okay. You just need to pay attention to what your pelt's doing to make life easier on yourself. So here's our tail over here. There's our leg. Come across the small of the back, very top of the tail. Okay, see how it ain't cooperating for me? Reposition. We don't have the leather right in line. Once you're in line, there you go. Get that heavy stuff off so you can see. <coughs> Clean my knife up. So once again, I want to make sure this is perfectly clean before I reposition, because I got the tension how I want it, but we need it clean. Just like so. I don't want all this grease in my first. We'll clean up our bead. Just like so. I mean, normally I got a t-shirt, old towel, one wipe, I'll be done. Just didn't happen to have one in my case here for the show, so we'll just use the towels. So, once again, I want to work this edge. See that? That's all I'm taking. That's all I want to take. Okay? When you start flushing and you start deciding what you want to do, and you're getting the response between you and your pelt and your knife, you know you're in control of what you're doing, okay? That's where your confidence will come in. So once again, I want this edge cleaned all the way. Once again, you can see that's all I'm taking. So I'll get it squared up here. Now I can pick out the rest of the leg, like so. Wants to bunch up so I don't have tension, reposition. Just like so. And there we got it. Okay. Everything's nice and clean here. Good to go. Clean my knife off. Clean my beam up before we send it back down for the final pass, which is right down the center of the back. So here we are, center of the back, this is all we got left, okay? <clears throat> so at this point, pretty much most guys, I do it differently, but I'll show you what most guys do. They go like this, you got to be on your sharp side, back of the neck, toughest part to get it going. So you're on the sharp side, and you're up here and you're working, you're working, you're trying to take this whole width, you know, that wide. You try and take it, but by the time you get down to the leather, you're this far below the ears. That's what happens to a lot of people. But they start grading from the base of the ear. So this needs to be clean. Okay, to me that's not clean enough. The easy way to do that, instead of taking the whole width on, is if you look at your beam, you got a corner and a corner. If I take this ear, put it up on that corner, I can come in here and go out at a 45 across the back of the face, top of the neck, like so. I can come take this ear, put it at the top of the beam on that corner and do the same, like so. 
So now when I put it on here again, straight in line, this is all I got to take. You can already see them cleaned up past the ears, okay? You're guaranteed to have the how clean it needs to be by just doing that simple couple little repositions and it'll work for you. So we're on the sharp side. See how we got movement right in front of my blade? Guess what we don't have? We don't have any tension. So I'm gonna work here, so I'm gonna pull right where my finger is. It's gonna be tight right there. Now I can do it, see? It was that simple. I wanna work over here. Well, let's get some tension over there. <clears throat> Turn it like so, tighten it up. It's laying flat. I can do whatever I want, okay? See how that working? All right, once we're to this point here, I'm gonna point something out, especially for you new guys who don't do much fleshing or haven't done it before. It gets very intimidating to pick up a sharp knife and make it work. Everyone's like, I'm gonna blow a big hole in there. I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna do it, okay? This is what you need to do. Lay your knife on here flat. Okay, you stroke, nothing happens. I'm gonna exaggerate, you stroke, nothing happens. Tip the blade, you stroke, nothing happens. Tip it again, you stroke, it's starting to work. Tip it a little bit more. Now when you feel that bite and it's working, stop tipping and going to work. So here's how you do it. Nothing, nothing, tipping, nothing, nothing, starting to work, there it is, let's go to work, okay? Everybody wants to take a knife, they want to lay it on here in the first stroke, they feel like they can plow this in one pass. It don't work that way, okay? Just take your time. You just gotta learn how to become one with your tool, okay? I'm giving you a few tips, but if you, if you put them to practice, it'll really start to click, okay? So we're working this guy down. If this was a really big coon, he would stay on your sharp side pretty much all the way down. This is just a typical coon. Here's his front legs, we're past it. So at this point it gets easy. So we'll stop with the sharp, go to the dull, go to the push, okay? See how it's bunching here? What don't we have? Tension, Oops, put it back in. Once it's back in there, Look what happens, it comes right off. Bring the work to me, put the tension back in. All that movement, don't like it, tighten it up. And there you go. Okay. So you can see with that practice I did before with taking the grease that way and that way, my fur is nice and clean here, okay? If you push through, this would be all greased up and end up getting matted down so those are the reasons you know how i do it why i do it so now we're getting our way right here down to the tail i haven't split this guy yet so let's get it done grab our tail zipper pop our tail just like so so a lot of guys use their two-handled knife here to flesh out their tails when I do it, I end up knocking off more than I keep. So I gave up using a two-handle knife a long time ago. So what I go to is, if I can find it in here. Oh, there it is. It's basically a fillet knife, okay? You see how it flexes? So what I do, just like I told you on those hind legs, I try and pick off this corner off this edge and then I clean up the center it's all about tension it's all about using just proper technique so I'm going to just take my hand and pull it on the tail for my tension and using my knife coming right in there it's the same same practices as all those fishermen use cleaning a fillet off getting that meat separated from the skin same thing okay comes right off. I'm not working. I've got no worry that I'm gonna knock this tail off. 
Now I'm doing the same on this edge over here, just like so. As you get down, you can take the whole tail. Got that little bit left in the center. We'll come right in here again, just like so. Pull it on the tail so it lays flat, nice and tight, and then you can do what you want, okay? So there's our tail. I see that? Nice and clean. I mean, it's about as good as it gets. A little bit right there. I can come right back, take it out. And that's all there is to fleshing, okay? Just simple little practices, simple little things. But, but when you know what you're doing, it just gets easy. All right. We're done fleshing, so now we're going to go and we're going to board our coon. Okay, I said board, we're not going to put it on a stretcher, we're going to put it on a board, okay? I didn't bring a wire stretcher with me, but what I want to show you is with proper pinning, you can get a heavy, nice look to your coon. So when you put a coon on a wooden board, everything you do from this point forward is going to make that coon look better, fuller, heavier, okay? If we put it on a wire stretcher, in my mind, everything you do is going to make it look weaker okay we all know what wire stretchers are you slide it on you take the hook you hook the base of the tail and you pull down all the tensions right here so you're thinning out the one and only spot they get to look at the fur the fur window is on the other side you're stretching that out giving it a more weak appearance so the next thing you do is you go to the belly side you take this hind leg Take this hind leg, put them in the hook, and then you pull them down like that. Like I just said before, you have to have an inspection window. On a wire, you're going to go, well, I ain't got one. Grab a fistful of fur here, and you carve that all out. Well, I got my window, and then you throw all that fur away. On a board, how you do it, we're going to use that fur, okay? We're going to keep it on here and make it look fuller. So, to do that... We're going to grab a, a wooden stretcher here. All mine are marked what the sizes of the industry are. You should always, always, always know where you're pinning your coon out, okay? You can look at this stretcher. I don't know if you guys can see it, but wherever my lines are, you'll never find pinholes on the line or just above. See, like this one, that's a good three-quarter, seven-eighths down. Here's that line. One, two, two more there of this line. One, two three coon were there, this line, there was coon down there, okay? I always know where I'm pinning, because when you gain a size, you gain money. Now, I know the coon market is really, really tough right now, but in the past, on typical years, when you could jump from a 2X to a 3X, you made $7. In any year, you made 7 bucks by jumping that size. Um, the other big jump is just to go from an XL to a 2X, those jumping from an XL to 2X is an important jump, but your biggest one you want to get to is a 3X. Especially right now, when any coon are selling, they're always 3X and bigger. 2Xs aren't. <clears throat> so you're going to probably tell yourself, what, why? What's the difference? When these pelts get all tanned and dressed out, coon that are stretched down to a 3X is more of a, a coke type um, coon pelt. Well, there's a market for it. They got their patterns, and it works, and it fits. But when they get to a 2X, those patterns are too long. So now they have to take strips, slide them, so it's more work to get the length. That's why they pay more for bigger coon. Okay? Sure, they get more square inches or square centimeters, whatever country you're in. But that's, that's the reason why. So here we go. We're going to take this guy, just like everything, back on one side, belly on another. We'll pull him down. I like to tuck my whiskers in. Got a little grease here. So here's before when I took that nose cartilage out. Can you guys see how this lip is way over the top of the edge of the stretcher? You see that lip? It said the top of the stretcher is there. I got the lip over, it's guaranteed not to slip off, okay? 
It's all about length. When they measure cone, they're gonna measure from the tip of the nose down. Well, if this slips off and goes like that, your stretch is still the same, but you just lost an inch, you just lost a size. So that's why I'm kind of harping on this a little bit. It's an important thing, I believe, to make sure you always keep that nose on top. Okay, taking the legs, square them up, tuck down, eyes and ears are straight. Now we're getting ready to pin. Get some stuff out of the way here. So like I said before, just judging this before, it's a 2X for sure. Maybe it's a 3X. We're going to find out. So once again, here are my lines. Here's that 3X. I'll, I'll hold it up so you can see better, but right here's the 3X line. We'll see if we can get it there. Okay. And I can already tell we can easily do that. So you pull down on the tail where the tail and the skirt meet. That's where you stick your first pin. I'm just gonna, it's gonna easily make it. So I'm just putting it at a comfortable stretch. I don't need to try and pull and gain another inch. It's gonna do me nothing. Whether it's right here or an inch longer, it's still a three X coon, okay? So those are my first pins. So now this is where we're gonna start changing things up. This is what we call pleating. My next pin's gonna end up right next to his buddy right here. But what I'm gonna do, I'm sticking it right here right over here but it goes right there okay next pin it's going to end up right next to his buddy but he's going to start over here and end up right there we'll do that one more time over here like so that's that side i'm going to pin this side just the same then i'll hold it up so you guys can see what it's looking like so once again, first pin is there. We stick over here, but it goes right next to his buddy, right there. We can do that once, twice, and then one last time. So here's what we got so far. You can see it's bulging up here a little bit. We're condensing that down. That will lay down when it dries, okay? Next thing I want to do is, I like a straight look, so I'm going to just touch them up and clean a little bit off the legs here. Um, I could leave it, it would be fine, but I do like a straight across the bottom appearance. There's one of Leon's famous sharp knives. Clean this little tab off here, like so. And then on the on the back hind part of the leg here, I just take a little off. I mean, I'm not taking anything. It usually gets greased up, sometimes not bad, sometimes real bad. But when you take that little bit off, it gives you a nice, gives you a nice clean fur here then, okay? So with that done, we're gonna go ahead and pin all the way to the edge. I'll do two more pins, like so, one there. And then I want to get one right over here by the edge. Now it looks like I'm using a lot of pins, and it is. It's how I do it. But you have to remember, when they measure, they measure from the tip of the nose to the highest arcing point at the bottom here. So if I pin this real good, and then this side I left two out and it arced up, they're going to measure to here. Once again, I lost that size that I worked so hard to get. Okay? So that's why we pin it like so. So what we got left now on this back side is the tail. So what we're gonna do is we'll stick this side of the tail and way down here, but guess where he's going? He's going right up there by his buddy. Same over here, we're gonna stick it down here. Once again, it goes right up behind here. I'm now on adjustable here. Um, a coon tail is wide enough where I can do this twice like so and like so right over here if we had a solid board you could just continue pinning your tail but on adjustable i just use a piece of plastic corrugation it doesn't have to hold a whole lot but this holds just fine because all it has to do is hold this tail open so it dries properly for me 
I scrunch my tail a little bit. It's not doing anything for a value. You don't get judged on your tail. If you didn't have a tail, you're not going to get knocked, but it's a look I like. Um, it's something different that a fur buyer or a fur grader sees. It just gives it a really a neat look. If I wanted to clown around with you guys, I, I like to say from time to time, the only reason why I pin my tails this way is because all the coon I catch are 5X and they don't fit in the bag, so I shorten the tail. Okay. So here's, here's my look. Okay. So is that like two inches? In between when you pull it up and the tail um he's asking the space yes. between pinning and the next time i'm about an inch and a quarter inch and a half okay. now the thing is you don't want to scrunch it so tight you have the hills and valleys tight together air can't get in there and it won't dry so you can see i got plenty of space in there so that's that's the look on this side all we got left is the belly suck four pins away from being done you can already see i almost got my fur window and I haven't even got to it yet. We're on a wire stretcher. We'd be sawing all this away. Okay. So now on this side here, I'll try and hold it up a little bit. All I'm going to do is right here on the inside of the hind leg. I'm going to stick it there. Over here on this side, I'm going to do the same. Before I do my last pinning, I'm just going to do a little bit of trim up here. Um, when I do my skinning, I leave as much fur on I can. So sometimes like right now, some of this fur here is like gilt going almost all the way down to the back of the pad. That's why it's easy just to trim it up now. So I always believe in leaving it long and then, then trim it when you're on the board. So we're just going to come in here. I'm going to start like that on my window, come around to the side like so. You can see I'm not taking much off. You can see we're not losing nothing of a fur here. And come right in here. Like so. Get that back on there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just one more set of pins just to make sure the, that this doesn't crowd over to the side. Get, the, get a weak looking flank. We'll pull it in like so. So there's our inspection window, okay? Four pins is all it takes. All we got left to do is, I leave my legs long, and you've seen that on the, on the fleshing beam, that's why. So now we just gotta trim them up. So we're just gonna come in here and just lift straight up, and just come in there and cut from the top side and then the back side. If I cut all the way through, it just keeps on going. You end up with a great big hole. So just make sure you cut about halfway or so through one way and then come back the other. We got a lower lip on here. You don't want that. That has to be gone. Just come right in here like so and clean that up just like that. We'll flip this guy over. So you can see we got a little bit of junk here if you will up on the head what i like to do when i want to touch something up instead of using my fingers in here like this trying to see what am i doing so i don't cut myself i'm going to use a, a wire cutter this is my new fingers i can see what i'm doing and i can get way more pull than i can with my fingertips that are greased up and come right in here just like that if there's a little something over here Get right over here, same thing. Tension, whatever I want to do, grab it. You can clearly see what I'm doing. Much safer, much easier to do. It's a little tip on that. So with our coon done here, now one last step before I hang it up is I just use an old butcher knife. It ain't sharp. What I want to do is if I got some leftover grease on here, if I missed a little spot when I flashed, I can go in there and clean that up. Lost my paper towel here. But I'll go all the way around. You'll be surprised how much grease you can get squeegeed out. And you're like, well, why are you doing that? Because the thing is, three days from now, 
when this is drying, all this grease I'd end up having to wipe off anyhow. For me, it's much easier, takes less rags, less time to just squeeze out whatever you got. This guy's not too greasy, but you get my concept here. So from that point here, I guess on the navel, we're just a little bit heavy right there. If I want to clean that up, same thing. Grab your, grab your side cutters and pull up. Look how much tension I can get. I can see what I'm doing. Regrip so I'm just like before in line with what I'm doing. I can pull all I want and clean that up. Okay, just an extra set of hands, but it makes it easy. So now this guy is ready to hang up. All my coon, when I hang them up, get hung up like this, head up, tail down, okay? I get asked all the time, what do you do with all that grease that goes into your fur? There is no grease going into my fur, okay? I squeegeed, I squeegeed a bunch of it out, and if I flush properly, it's not a problem. Worst case I'm ever gonna have is maybe a little drip from here, about like that. Otherwise, everything else is just beaded up. So it's going to hang for three days, and I'm going to wipe it down, hang it back up, and I leave it for four more days. Okay, my process is a week. I could take it off in six days in my mind, but I like them on there a week. Okay, it's just how my system, how I like my shop ran. So that's pretty much on how we put up Coon. Any questions? How do you sharpen the um, Dave here asked, how do I sharpen my uh, fleshing knife? So when my fleshing knife gets dull, all I use is a, a good quality steel. Mine's fine right now, so I don't want to touch it. I'm going to put it on here, and I stroke to the center three times, back this way three times. But before I go to the beam, I'm going to lay it on here flat and wipe off I'll wipe that off, and then I'm ready to go. I can't sharpen anything at all. My knives suck. I'm not that good at sharpening it. This knife here is over 15 years old, okay? I've done lots and lots of critters with it, and I need to sharpen it. I can sharpen this tool. Don't ask me why, but I can get this thing to work and do whatever I want, and that's why I like it, okay? Um, I think you had a question, sir? Yeah, I got you. Okay. The question is, what do I do with the ears? Do I cut the cartilage out? You have to do that on canines, okay. but on coon you don't. Okay. Look, um, let's say we had a heavy amount of uh, cartilage right there. If you want, do that same thing. You can come right in here with the pliers, grab a hold, and you can just take off. I'm just knocking a little off so you can see. But you can do that. But these are fine. They're going to dry just fine. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. One thing I'm going to add, because I do get asked it all the time, you know, everyone hangs their coon this way. I told you I hang mine this way. And the main reason why, my shop is at basically at 58 degrees. I got four stairs at 58 degrees. Now that's here at this level. But up at the ceiling, it's 65. Okay. Right? Right when we heat everything, the ceiling's always the warmest place, the floor is always the coldest place. On anything you do, what's the slowest thing to dry on a pelt? Anybody? The head, right? The head's always the slowest thing to dry. So put the head in the warmest part of your shop. Okay? To me, it's just common sense. Okay. Hey. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Um, to me, it sounds a little bit corny, just for the fact of it's on a stretcher. The fur, the fur can't bounce up or bounce down. It's stuck where it is yeah, until you take it, it off. The closest thing I can think to to maybe verify what that guy is saying um, on your canines, 
when you invert them and have them fur out, before you hang it back up, you reverse comb. You reverse comb everything. You know, the natural lay of the fur is this way, but to get that full look, you want it the other way. So you reverse comb it so it gets trained to stand up. Okay. Um, if, if that's it, um, or anyone else has any more questions, yes, sir. Um, question is to use sawdust to absorb the grease. You can see on my grease when I when by tumbling it gets coated with that grit, so that aids me right there. But if you do have a hot coon and you got lots of oil, yeah, go right ahead and, and put some on there to help absorb it so it's not getting into your fur. I usually never have that problem, but it's it's definitely a, a doable thing. Okay, thanks. Um, if that's all we have for questions, I'm just going to pass along that this is really just a sample of what I do at the LKL school. I'm the fur handling instructor there. Um, at the school, we've got three instructors. Um, once again, I do the pelt handling side. Liesl Rosat, he does um, canines and bobcat trapping and a lot on location. And then the third instructor is Kendall Overmeyer. He talks about trapping mink in the water coon and then one of the three days he does talk about how he catches his canines so if you really like what i'm showing you here if you want you can stop by our booth top lot stretcher we're in that building over there um, we've got plenty of information on the school that i can pass along there i just don't want this to turn into a, a commercial thing for that i just wanted to pass that along um, if you have any more questions, stop by the booth. I'll be happy to answer. And with that, I'll say thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.